Art expresses to the king that his only desire is to return home to his family. Now that the princess has returned safely, Tesha becomes anxious at the possibility of losing her new friends. After discussing their options, the king and queen decide to reward Art for his bravery in saving their daughter. However, the teleportation gate that leads to the human kingdom only opens during the summit conference, which occurs once every seven years. So instead, the king offers to send a group of guards with Art to escort him safely to his house. While the escort is prepared, the king offers to let him stay in the palace. He is given a comfortable room in the palace, but while taking a shower, he experiences another bout of pain from his mana core. He sits on the couch, holding the egg to comfort himself. He starts to wonder how nice it would have been if Sylvia was here to help him. As he is lost in thought, he hears a knock at the door. Just as he opens the door, Tesha headbutts him without a warning. She is upset as Art is going to leave soon. He is the first friend she has ever had. Moved by her sentiment, he comforts her by putting his arm around her and suggests they explore the castle together. Tesha leads Art on a delightful tour of her cherished spots in the castle, and they finally reach the garden brimming with shimmering globbies. Excitedly, Tesha picks up one of the delicate creatures and offers it to Art to hold. Just as they're admiring the beauty of the garden, Art senses an object hurtling toward them. Reacting quickly, he pulls Tesha close and intercepts the flying object, which turns out to be a knife. He goes on the offensive and confronts the attacker, only to realize that it's Virian. He gets angry and yells at him, questioning how he could try to harm his granddaughter. Virian then reveals that the knife was just a toy, leaving Art feeling embarrassed about his reaction. Impressed by Art's quick reaction and instincts, Virian adds that his mana usage is mediocre at best. This leaves Art questioning the purpose of his visit. To further evaluate his abilities, Virian tosses him a wooden sword, eager to assess his combat skills. Art picks up the wooden sword and prepares to face off against Virian. He charges forward, but unfortunately, his strike only hits Virian's cloak as he uses his incredible speed to dodge the attack and appear behind Art. Virian attempts to deliver a karate chop to Art's neck, hoping to render him unconscious. However, Art's quick reflexes allow him to block the attack just in the nick of time. Virian doesn't stop there, following up his failed karate chop with a punch that forces Art to jump in the air to dodge. Seizing the opportunity, he lands a hit on Art. However, Art refuses to give up and quickly launches another attack. Despite using mana to enhance his movements, he struggles to keep up with Virian's incredible speed and agility. As before, Virian swiftly appears behind Art, causing him to dodge once again. However, this time, he uses a sweep kick, throwing Art off balance and causing him to drop his sword. In a moment of impressive maneuvering, Art manages to grab the sword mid-air and scratch Virian's forehead with it just before he's knocked away. Despite Virian ultimately winning the fight, he's impressed that Art managed to land a hit. To everyone's surprise, he offers to take Art as his disciple. He also adds that he can teach him skills that no human mage in Sapin could ever offer. Initially, Art is hesitant and declines the offer, determined to find his family instead of staying to train. However, Virian captures his attention when he reveals that there's a way for Art to communicate with his parents and inform them that he's safe. Before continuing their conversation, Varian requests one of the maids to escort Tesha away. Art is surprised when Virian reveals that he's aware of Art's bouts of pain stemming from his mana core. As he puts his coat back on, he asks Art if he's familiar with the concept of a beast will. Even though Art has no idea what he's referring to, he immediately recalls the memory of Sylvia touching him. Virian goes on to explain that when a mana beast reaches a rank of A or higher, it gains the ability to pass on its will to another individual. While he doesn't inquire as to how Art acquired his beast will, he does mention that it's currently causing more harm than good. Art asks if Virian also owns a beast will, as he knows so much about it. Virian reveals that he is a beast tamer. It is a title one obtains when they completely conquer the beast will inside them. Although Art is eager to see his family, Virian warns him that leaving now could be very dangerous. If Art doesn't learn to control the power within his mana core soon, it could ravage him from the inside. The next morning, Tesha arrives early to wake him up, as she'd been informed that he would be staying for a while. So, she came to confirm with him. Art tells her that they will know for sure after the trip today. As the carriage is being prepared for their trip, the king and queen try to argue with Virian on the matter of letting Art stay. Even though he saved Tesha, it is inappropriate for a human to stay within the kingdom. 
It goes against all their traditions. Virian tells them that he has taken a liking to art, and Tesha also wants him to stay. The king tries to continue the argument, but Virian puts an end to it by stating that he will personally mentor art, so they should let everyone know not to cause him any trouble. The group starts their journey. As Art arrives at the carriage, Varian, Art, and Tesha set off to meet Varian's friend who can assist Art in speaking with his parents. While on the journey, Tesha falls asleep in the carriage. Varian takes this opportunity to explain to Art that Tesha, being a princess, had to grow up in solitude without any companion. He adds that she has been hurt too many times by both adults and even children pretending to be her friends. As a result, she built a wall around herself. However, since Art arrived, Tesha has been smiling more frequently, which Virian appreciates and thanks him for. Finally, the group arrives at a weird-looking house in the heart of the forest. Virian starts banging on the door, calling for the old witch to come out. When she comes out, it becomes evident that the word witch does describe her quite accurately. Virian introduces her as Rena Darkison, an old friend of his, and she is a deviant who can help Art talk to his parents. Rena prepares a large bowl filled with water, and as she uses her magic, she instructs Art to imagine a mental picture of his parents while gazing at the water surface. She tells him that once he can see his parents' image in the reflection, he will be able to communicate with them. Art creates a vivid mental picture of his mother and father, and to his amazement, their image begins to emerge slowly in the water. Art's parents were extremely saddened by his alleged demise, and their sorrow was evident in their appearance. While preparing dinner on a typical day, they are astounded to hear Art's voice resonating in their minds, leaving them in shock. He tells them how he managed to survive the fall and is staying in the Elven Kingdom. All the while, his parents can't help but recall the awful memories of when they lost their son after the fall. Ray searched everywhere but only found the dead bandit. Alina was so overwhelmed with grief from losing her son that she even attempted suicide. After searching for so long, the couple eventually concludes that Art must have died. They eventually go to Oxyrus, where they go to a wealthy friend of Ray's. He offers him a new job as the head of security, and the couple starts a new life there. In the present, upon hearing their son's voice, the couple cannot help but burst into tears while embracing each other as they are overwhelmed with emotions. Even Art can't hold back his tears as he watches them in the water's reflection. Now more determined than ever to get back, he tells Varian that he is ready to start their training, as he wants to get back as soon as possible. When they return to the castle, Art is stopped by the king as he tries to enter. Both the king and the queen apologize to him for what they said earlier. The king welcomes him to the castle and thanks him for saving his daughter. They are interrupted by Tesha, who wants to show Art around the city as a form of apology. Art waits patiently for Tesha at the steps of the castle. When she finally arrives, they set off to explore the city. During their stroll, Art bumps into a noble elf. He is one of those elves who believe Art doesn't belong in their city, despite Varian saying otherwise. Farith Ifs Hour comes off as the annoying side character that one reads about in every novel. While introducing himself to Tesha, he doesn't even bother to pay attention to Art. Art mocks him by pretending to mistake his name for a Pokemon and sarcastically introduces himself as well. This angers Farith, and he challenges Art to a duel, staking the honor of his house. He asks him what he will do telling him that his decision will reflect upon his mentor. Before Art can reply, he decides to take his silence as an acceptance. Tesha is forced to officiate the duel as the prideful noble confidently moves toward Art. He fails to realize the strength of his opponent. Before he can finish his cliché lines about his genius, Art quickly dashes toward him and takes him out with a single punch, leaving even himself surprised by the weakness of the noble. After all that talk, Tesha grabs him and they continue their tour, relishing the moment. As Art's training is scheduled to start the next day, and they might not have the chance to do this again, she asks him if he is nervous. But Art tells her he is excited, not only for the training, but also for seeing his parents. Having come a long way, he is eager to see what the future holds for him. Art and Tesha have become even closer friends while training together under Virion for three years. During their training, they learned that there are four basic elements, water, earth, fire, and air. Each has a higher form, namely ice, gravity, lightning, and sound, respectively. These higher forms can only be controlled by a mage who has mastered its basic element. Each race has its elemental affinities, with the dwarves excelling in manipulating earth and fire, 
and some of them possessing such mastery over these elements that they are capable of conjuring and manipulating magma. On the other hand, elves are limited to water, wind, and earth elements, but they have a much higher affinity for them than humans. In rare cases, elves can produce a special deviant that can control plants. However, elves aren't able to produce mages that can control the higher forms. Humans have the ability to control all four basic elements and are capable of producing deviants in any of those elements. They can even produce anomalies that can't be categorized into the basic elements, like healers and emitters. There exists a delicate balance of power between all these races. This is the explanation that Art gives Virian as part of his lesson. As part of the process called assimilation, Virian is preparing Art's body to pass on his beast will. Meanwhile, Tesha is undergoing rigorous physical training every day to develop her skills. For an elf, it is not usual to awaken at the age of 10, unlike humans who typically awaken during their pre-teen years. However, her awakening occurred at the tender age of 9, and since then, she's been honing her conjuring abilities under a mentor while simultaneously engaging in combat training with Virian. She is tired of getting beaten up all day, so she asks Virian to let Art do physical training as well. He explains to her that during the past three years, Art has been basically fusing his bones, muscles, and organs with his mana. He assures her that despite not doing physical training, he will become much stronger and more resilient. After three years of training, the time has finally come for Virian to stabilize Art's mana core. This means that he will become a beast tamer like him. He puts his hand on Art's chest and Virian explains that he is going to insert a large amount of his mana into Art's mana core. As soon as he starts the process, Art feels immense pain throughout his body. The pain is followed by an explosion of mana, which sends Virian and Tesha flying. Virian is shocked, as this has never happened before. He asks Art what kind of a beast gave him its will for there to be such a powerful reaction. Virian is left completely awestruck as Art tells him it was a dragon. Art passes out soon after. When he gains consciousness, he finds Virian by his side and expresses his gratitude for keeping his beast will a secret. Virian reminds him that the time for his departure is close, with only four months left. Art is surprised, as he thought the summit conference was still two years away. Virian tells him that an interracial tournament is being held for the youths and so the portal to Zyrus City will open. He is both happy and worried at the same time, as he knows that he will have to break this news to Tesha. Virian tells him that now that the assimilation process is complete, they will train even harder for the last four months before leaving. Virian also tells him that he will break the news to Tesha. As Art sits in his room alone, he hears a cracking sound. It is the egg that Sylvia left him with, and it is about to hatch. From within the egg, a baby dragon emerges revealing itself to be a small, adorable creature with jet-black scales, minuscule wings, and barely visible teeth. Overwhelmed by the cuteness of the dragon, Art picks it up. But to his surprise, the little dragon bites him on his arm, leaving behind a distinctive burn mark from its fiery breath. As Art tries to communicate with the baby dragon, he hears a voice in his mind. It appears that the dragon has formed a telepathic bond with him, as she thinks of him as her mother. Deeply touched by this, Art decides to name the dragon Sylvie, in honor of its real mother. Art is taken aback as he senses a surge of excitement emanating from Sylvie at the sound of her newly given name, making him realize that his connection with the baby dragon goes beyond mere telepathy. Overcome with exhaustion, he falls asleep on his bed with Sylvie by his side. He is woken up by an excited Tesha as she discovers the cute baby dragon. He explains everything to her from how she hatched to his mental connection with her. They take Sylvie to Virian when they go for their usual training lesson. Virian is completely stunned when he sees a dragon casually sitting on Art's head. Art tells Virian about Sylvie's unusual hatching, and Virian explains that creatures like her typically only hatch in the presence of their own kind. Art realizes that activating Sylvia's will may have caused Sylvie to hatch. Virian suggests he should simply claim that Sylvie is a rare creature when he returns, as many people are not familiar with mana beasts. With Art now fully awakened, Virian suggests that they begin training to enhance his mana core. He emphasizes that the most effective way to strengthen both the mana core and the beast will is through constant combat. Art feels a rush of excitement at the prospect of sparring with Virian once again. 
His excitement quickly turns into shock as Virian finally decides to reveal his own beast will. A black shadow shaped like a panther surrounds him. As the shadow clears up, Art sees a black figure with yellow eyes and razor-sharp claws. It's Varian, who has activated his beast will. Beast tamers possess a rare gift, as they are among the few mages who have the ability to tap into the innate powers inherited from a mono-beast. This initial stage, commonly referred to as the Acquire phase, enables the mage to draw upon the strength and agility of the mono-beast, imbuing themselves with heightened speed and physical prowess. Upon entering the second phase, known as the Integrate phase, a beast tamer gains the ability to fully harness the distinctive powers of their mana beast. Varian, having dedicated decades to mastering this stage, can now skillfully wield the deadly prowess of a Shadow Panther to his advantage. Virian tells Art to get ready, warning him that he is going to sneak up behind him. Art is confident that it won't happen, as he is now ready because of the warning. He keeps his eyes firmly on Virian, but in the blink of an eye, Virian completely disappears. A moment later, Art feels a dark, shadowy hand on his shoulder. He quickly turns around to attack, but once again, Virian disappears from his sight and comes up behind him. Realizing the strength of his foe, Art decides to surrender, as he knows he can't win if he can't even follow his movement. As Virian reverts back to his original form, he reveals to Art that while the Integrate phase grants him immense power, it comes at a cost. The exertion of the transformation drains him considerably. Despite his years of training, Art realizes that it wasn't just his speed, he couldn't feel Virian's presence at all. Virian explains that Shadow Panthers possess the innate ability to manipulate the wind and sound around them, rendering themselves entirely undetectable. Having completed the demonstration, they resume their training. Days quickly pass as Art gets immersed in his training through Varian's guidance and his own insight. He succeeded in unlocking the initial stage of his beast will. Virian also taught him how to hide his beast will when around other mages. Art spent most of his time either strengthening his mana core or studying a dragon will. When he wasn't doing either, he was constantly sparring with Virian. Despite his busy training schedule, Art made sure to carve out time to enjoy his youth with Tasha, just as Sylvia had hoped he would. However, as the day of his departure drew near, he found it increasingly difficult to deliver the news to Tesha, whom he had spent countless days with over the past few years. Before his departure, Art carefully wrapped the feather around Sylvie's mark, allowing it to be concealed more easily. He would be leaving for the interracial tournament in a carriage alongside his fellow competitors. As a farewell gift, Virian presents Art with a compass bearing the crest of House Airlift. Art hugs Tesha while saying goodbye, telling her that he will miss her, and promises to meet again. When he boards the carriage, he is surprised to find Farith sitting there. It seems he is one of the participants. Before Farith can start ranting about how he was beaten unfairly, Art grabs his hand and apologizes for what happened. Farith is accompanied by two of his friends who are also from noble houses. After a long journey, they finally arrive at the floating city of Zerus. Without hesitation, Art made his way directly to where his parents were staying. As he stood nervously outside the door, he couldn't help but feel a wave of memories wash over him, reflecting on his journey from the moment he became separated to the present. Despite his anxiety, he summons the courage to knock on the door and waits anxiously for a response. He hears the sound of a young girl's voice approaching. When the door opens, Art respectfully introduces himself to the maid, but his attention is quickly diverted when he sees the person he had been longing to see for so long, Elena. She had come to check up on her daughter Eleanor. As Elena's gaze meets Art's, she is shocked to her core, and she drops the food she is carrying to feed Eleanor. Art can't hold back his tears as he meets his sister for the first time in his life. Elena quickly rushes over and embraces Art. When Ray hears what is going on, he too comes rushing over from, from the garden. He too hugs Art and Elena. The family of four all embrace each other tightly with tears of joy streaming down their faces. After things settle down, Alina begins to ask Art all the typical questions that a worried mother would, such as how he has gotten so thin and how his voice has changed. As she does so, she calls out to Eleanor to come meet her older brother. Eleanor climbs down from the couch and makes her way to Art. He gets down on his knees and introduces himself to his sister. The two parents couldn't be happier watching their kids bond. After the initial questions, Art begins to explain everything to his family. 
Although he trusts them completely, he chooses to leave out the part about Sylvia and his beast will, instead telling them that he found Sylvia in a beast's den. He explains that her mother was dying from an injury, and he couldn't save her, so he decided to adopt a little creature and raise her. He feels guilty about keeping secrets from his family, but believes it's necessary to protect them until he becomes strong enough. Ray, being his usual self, asks him how strong he's become. He tells Art that he has been working as an instructor for the guards at the Helsda auction house. Curious about Ray's progress, Art asks about the current stage of Ray's mana core. Ray boasts about his mana core having reached the dark orange. He is left dumbfounded when Art reveals that his mana core is at the light red stage, just one stage behind Ray. Upon hearing the news of Ray's son's return, Vincent and his family rush over to greet him and his family. They have been taking care of Art's family while he was gone. Ray introduces Art to Vincent and his wife Tabitha, and Art respectfully greets them with a deep bow. Vincent expresses surprise at his respectful behavior, even questioning if he is truly Ray's son. Tabitha warmly welcomes Art to their home and introduces him to their young daughter Lilia. Like Tesha, Lilia instantly falls in love with Sylvie upon meeting her. After the introduction, everyone moves out to the yard to witness the sparring match between Ray and Art. As they wait for the match to start, Alina tells Tabitha that Art is a mage with a light red mana core, but Vincent is in disbelief, finding it hard to accept that an eight-year-old could possess such abilities. As the duo kicks off their match, Art charges toward Ray with incredible speed. He attempts to punch him, but Ray skillfully blocks the attack. Ray grabs Art's arm intending to toss him, but Art counters and flips him instead. Despite being thrown, he expertly maneuvers his footwork to avoid falling. With the fight reset, Ray shifts gears and advances to the next stage. He conjures his magical powers and bursts into flames covering his entire body. When a child is born, their affinities and strengths are already set. Usually, parents consult professionals to learn what route to push their newborn mage towards. For conjurers, it is obvious what their affinities are, but for augmenters, it's much more subtle until they cross a certain threshold and can manifest elements. For Ray, who has been fighting and training from an early age, it took him until the orange stage to turn his explosive mana into an actual fire. In Art's previous life, affinities weren't decided at birth, but it was a path that one chose to follow. This meant that they weren't restricted. Following Ray's lead, Art decides to manifest his element, which is lightning. 